coming. Sing it. Well, he's coming around the bend. You know, the Lord God said he's coming back. Oh, yeah. But one thing he didn't say when. Oh, yeah. You know what? Get your house in order. Because that train is coming again. And I want you to know nothing on that train. Coming. Yes. Oh yeah, and you know he's coming around the van. Oh yeah, the Lord God said he's coming back again. But one thing he didn't say when. You know what? Get your house in order because that train is coming again. And I want you to know there's nothing on this train to lose, but everything to gain. Why don't you come along, my friend? Come along, get on board and ride this train. Nothing on. coming oh yeah you know he's coming around the bend the Lord God said he's coming back again but you know it's one thing he didn't say when you know what get our house in order because he's gonna come back again and I want you to know that nothing on this train to lose, but everything to gain. Why don't you come along, my friend? Come along, get on board and ride this train. Good morning, Hebron Zion. Good morning. This morning's scripture comes from Psalm 138, verses 1 through 8. I give you thanks, Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name <clears throat> and your word above everything. On the day I called you, you answered me. You increased my soul, strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. 
For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for all the love and forgiveness you give us in abundance. Like the best parent, you love us unconditionally and forgive us over and over. You guide us if we can be still and listen, and you protect us as we go through our lives. We are also grateful for the world you surround us with and for all those who work to spread your love and message of encouragement and forgiveness. Continue to inspire us, we pray. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Jesus calls us to enter the joy of discipleship, the joy of following in his way, but sin clings closely, and we struggle in response fully to Christ's invitation. Let us seek God's forgiveness so that we may know more deeply the joy God intends. God of perfect love, you continually bring forth life, transforming sadness to joy and despair to hope. We are weak, but you are strong. Our ways are flawed, but your ways are true. We are seldom right, but you are never wrong. Forgive us, redeem us, transform us, take away the sin that burdens us, and restore us to the people you would have us to be for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Hear the good news. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Hebrew and Zion. Good morning. This is a great day. It's another day that the Lord has seen fit to let us be here one more day. We give him thanks for that. Welcome to everyone here and those who are viewing us via the media outlets that we have. We pray, God, for you that wherever you are, God is sitting right next to you. We have a few announcements. Well, it's, first of all, you know that Pastor Patricia Jones is taking some well-needed rest. And she has been involved with the congregation she was at graduation for our recent graduates that we have here. Miss Olivia, Robinson and Joshua, Robinson and of course the past was at those at those events. So as she take rest, she's still doing her duty for her church. So we want to Thank God for her and that she will get the needed rest and recuperate. There's an announcement here. Um, Giles Island Parish presents a community market on July 6, 2024, 2369, I mean 2389 Boycott Road from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Free entry and parking for patrons. They're having some kind of community market thing just going on there. For more information, you can contact Claudia J. Brown, and this will probably be in the Northex. There's another announcement here about a jazz, an evening of jazz featuring the Smalls experience. 
Saturday, June 22nd, at Johns Island Community Center, 2389 Bohicket Road, $25 advance tickets, 30 at the door, and it includes a light meal. I'm not sure what that light meal could be very light. Okay. But it's, that would be, that's on the 22nd, 2389 Bohicket Road. Are there any other announcements? Saturday? Okay. Did you hear that? Donuts for dads? Okay. Next Saturday. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. I want to say, to God be the Lord. Yes. You know, you see God's glory, but you don't know the story. Mm hmm. And I want to thank when I baptized the five grand. I asked this congregation for one thing and one thing only. That is to be. Amen. Yes, that's what it is. All about God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, thank you for that. You know, I was <clears throat> thinking the other day that we missed the time when we could get up and hold hands and hug each other and whatnot, but we're still in that in that period with this COVID thing. So we will say to you that the, the act of peace, the peace of Christ be with you all here and in your land. To God be the glory. God will find a way to do that. Okay, as we... Uh, Approach the time of our prayer where we go to God. I want to say on our prayer list we have, we don't know if this is a complete list, but we have Maria Blygen, Cash Brown, the grandnephew of Helena Middleton Brown, Charles Freeman, James Jimmy Jenkins, Anne Glick King, Jeffrey Middleton, Sylvia. 
Powell, granddaughter of Jay Hutchison, Veronica R. Richardson, Mary S. Richardson, Beverly and Walter Shield, food pantry volunteers, Peter Wilson, and Robert Wright. Are there any others? Amen. Okay, Clifford. Okay. All right, and here we have today someone is asking for prayer for Luther, Hunter and the Morton family, Janie Daniels and family, Maurice Seabrook and Ivory Jenkins. And one that says, give thanks for his grace and mercy over us. And I think of his children. And somebody asked today for prayers for Gwendolyn Smith. Someone asked for prayers for Patrick Washington. Asking prayers for Crystal Nicholas and Dolores Jeffcoat. And ask prayers for Nathaniel Hunter. And we will ask God for prayers for all. Let us pray. Father God, you've heard the petition from your people. Lord, the families, the individuals, Lord, asking for prayer. Lord, we all need prayer. Because we know that prayer will. Prayer will make a difference in our lives. Because we are here today, Lord, because somebody, someone prayed for us. And we thank you, Lord. Because we know that each and every day, each and every moment of the day, Lord, that you are with us. You promised that you will never leave us. And we give you the, the glory, Lord. We give you the grace. We give you all the power, Lord, that you have, that you look down at us with an eye of mercy, Lord, and you look past our faults and you see our needs. And Father, our needs are great. Some, Lord, couldn't get up this morning. Some probably didn't have enough to eat this morning. Some didn't have a place to get up from. Some are sleeping under bridges, Lord, in abandoned houses. Some are sleeping in the woods. Oh, God, but you know. And you've said to us, Lord, that we are our brother's keeper. It's up to us, Lord, to see. And it's up to us to do when we know. We ask you to forgive us, Lord, where we have trespassed against you. We have not followed your order to love one another. And Father God, we just ask on this day, as we come before you, Lord, that you will look down at us, Lord. Open our hearts and our minds. Oh, Father, that we may understand what it is that you desire for us to do. 
Because there will come a time. There will be an end to this, Lord. And we want to make sure that when the end comes that we are on the right side. Now, Lord, we ask as we bring your word that your word will find a place in our hearts, Lord. And that as I speak these words, Lord, that they too will be heard through my head bone. That, Lord, that for me too, we ask you to bless us all, Lord. Don't ever leave us alone. We trust you and we love you. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. With gratitude for God's faithfulness and with thanksgiving for all that we have received, let us bring our gifts to God. gifts. Use them even as you use us to accomplish your purposes in Jesus Christ, the head of the church and the Lord of our lives. Amen. Amen.
Heaven's looking down. Don't you ever forget it. The Somalic text comes from Romans 5, 6 through 8, NIV. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray, Father. We ask you, Lord, as you look down at us with an eye of mercy, clear our hearts and our minds, Lord, to know that you, you are the one, Lord. You are the first, you're the last. And all in between, Lord, we thank you and ask that you continue, Lord, to bless and keep us all. And we thank you. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. My Christian friends, I was glad when the pastor asked me to conduct worship service this day because it gives me the opportunity to share with you something that occurred with me here. Sunday before last, the last Sunday in, in May, Miss P and I, this is our home church, even though I now I belong to Presbytery because of the commission passed the thing, but I support this church. Love this church. And what was happening was we prepare our offering, what we're going to contribute to the church each month. And that Sunday before last, that's what I was doing. 
I got out my checkbook. And then I said, you know, the time is going by real fast, you know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to figure out when was the last time? What was that date? So one mind says, go check your checkbook, go back and look through the dates. And the other mind says, what? You gonna check on you giving something to God's work? When God has given you everything that you possess? You gonna check God? What was happening, my friend, was that that cunning individual, that deceiver, was putting doubt in between my relationship with God and all that God has done for me and is doing right now. I was going to check God to see whether or not I was giving God too much. My friends, I'm telling you, you cannot outgive God. You cannot give God too much. The scripture says that while we were yet powerless to do anything for ourselves, that God sent his son into the world. He didn't send him to bring us oranges and apples. He said, you got to go die for them. While we were yet wrong. And I was checking God. That's what that cunning individual said. But if we listen to the spirit of God that says, what? You checking God? God woke you up this morning. Started you on your way. Look at you. Food, clothing, and shelter. And you're going to check God. Oh, my Christian friends, I felt shame. Because in spite of all our rudeness and our terrible living, God still loves us. Still gives us what we need. Oh, my friends, I want to say to you, this is not about stewardship. It's not about that. It's about the relationship that we have with God and that God has given us so much. Especially from John 3.16, he says that For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave his best so that you and I may have a right to the tree of life. And we're going to check God. And I know now what used to happen. Folks would go in their pocket and they'll come out with the least coin. To give to God's work. My friends, I want to say, guess what? All of it belongs to God. All of it belongs to God and you. I can guarantee you're not going anywhere with it. It's going to be right here when you leave. All that you possess. Your shoes. Your hats. (laughs) Everything is going to be here. Only what you do for Christ will last. I want you to understand again, like this is not a stewardship message. I just want to remind you, as I'm reminded, that we cannot give God too much. Oh, my friends, like I said, I didn't remember when the last time that I had contributed something. And I'm talking about, you know, with the tithes and offerings. And then I'm thinking, am I giving too much? How could you do that? You can't give God too much. Remember in the scripture with the the, the, the widow, she had what, two mites or whatever that was. And she put it all in there. 
They didn't make a sign because they were like coins. But the Lord said, that one right there. See, she trusted God. Even though I give all that I have, God has said that he will provide for me. Oh, my Christian friends, like I said, I felt, I felt shame that I was checking God. But God didn't strike me. Brought me to my senses. And sometimes folks will say, ain't no fool like an old fool. Huh? <laughs> I tell you what, my friends, each day, if we live for the Lord, it's a wake-up call. God's got something for us. And I want to tell you to be aware. Beware of the slickness and the cunning of Satan. And don't, es don't underestimate the things and the ways that he could fool us and cause us to do things differently. My friends, I can just point to you at the world. If you've listened to any news as of last night, Yesterday, how many people dying because of foolishness? Because God has already laid down the word and said, Thou shall not. And God has told us that we need to love him and to love our neighbor as ourselves. So why are you killing your neighbor? <laughs> Satan has said that his job is to run amok throughout this world, create chaos. Satan will put us against our loved ones. Satan will interfere in everything that's going on. But we are to hold on to God's unchanging hand, to listen to the spirit that we have in us that will counteract that doubter that says, check God. Says you, you can't do that. If you do, you're making a mistake. Scripture tells us that the very elect will be misled. Matthew 24, 24 says that there will arise false Christs and false prophets and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray. If possible, even the elect of God. No matter how long you've been on this journey, Satan is still riding. See, because in the 20th chapter of Revelation, it said where well, he's going to end up in the lake of fire. So Satan goes, what? I don't have anything to lose except to load the bus. My Christian friends, I want to remind you today that we are to listen to the spirit that God has within us. They're telling us the right thing to do. Yes. Satan will always tell us the wrong thing to do. Satan is not our friend. It's what a friend we have in Jesus and not Satan. <laughs> Satan is the cause of what we see on a daily basis. Folks dying, being burned alive, being shot for their own stuff. Oh, my friends, we are under attack daily. And I say to you, Sunday before last was not the only time that Satan attacked and have been attacked me but that was so in my face to tell me to check God or how much you give to God not thinking wait a minute look at what God has given all that he had so let me pose this question how much should we give? How much we give 
God always gives us more. Though we may try, we cannot outgive God. First of all, God has more at his disposal than we have. So we may have six pairs of shoes, but how many can you wear at one time? When we put our little pennies in motion, God add $100 bills. Now I know in here that if we would go through this to tell about the blessings that God has done in your life. When, there, when you saw there was not a way, when there was no way, God made a way. I know in my life, when you look and say you, you need that particular thing and you don't see how that's going to come, and next thing you know, or the phone rings and somebody says, hey, I got this thing for you. And I can remember when I got the job at Medical University and I needed to get there for the evening shift. I had to be there by 3.30. And of course, we only had one mode of transportation and that was being used and I needed to get there so I started walking I came out of Fall Kirk onto Mary, 5th Avenue Maryville some of you might know what that is and I needed to get down to Medical University my friends as I was walking down that road a taxi cab turned onto Maryville Fifth Avenue. Now you may say in your mind, well, that guy was going that way anyway. Yeah, but I needed. <laughs> I needed a way to get down there. And I said, thank you, Lord. God sent a way. Made a way out of no way. So with all the blessings that God has given us, my friends, let us not. Let us not hold back on God. Whatever your mindset tells you that what you're going to give to God, give that. Don't change it. Because that's Satan. Satan is telling you, don't do that. You need that for that other thing. Remember that trip you're going on? Yeah, well, you know you need that. No. You might not make the trip. You might not make the trip. But you want to make sure that what you do, that you do for the Lord. And remember that the only thing that counts is what you do for Christ. No matter all these other things we do, my Christian friends. And reminding you, God already told us how much that we should give. And he didn't say give all. He said only give a piece, a little portion of that. And then we want to hold back on that little portion that we're supposed to give. Oh, my Christian friend, let's think about that. I just want to remind you that God is the giver. He gives us everything that we need. So let's not hold back on God. Let's not think that we can give God too much. Because all that we have God gave it to us. Amen? Amen? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We ask that you continue to bless and keep us, Lord, and keep us safe from the wiles of Satan, Lord. Come and tell us, tell us lies. Convince us, Lord, that you don't care about us, but we know better you have promised to never leave us alone. You've promised, Lord, food, clothing, and shelter. And we thank you. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. My friends, during this time, there may be someone here 
that's not a member of the family of the followers of Jesus Christ, if there be one, we ask you to come forth so that we may pray for you and point you in a direction that you can find that peace and that peace is in Jesus Christ. If there be one, my Christian friends, you don't have to belong to Hebrew Zion, but you need to belong to the family, the followers of Jesus Christ. Let us stand as we Take me to the water to be baptized, oh Lord, to be baptized, oh Lord, to be baptized, oh Lord, to be the you ask us to do, Lord. We've opened the doors. We've invited those who have not called you, Lord. And Father, we just ask that you continue, Lord, to bless and keep us all. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us say what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ, the Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of a virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and sent us on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, it's cut quick to the dead. I believe in it. Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My Christian friends, I say to you today, I love you. The Lord loves you. And even though we may stumble and we make mistakes, God is there to forgive us. 
All we have to do is confess that to the Lord and the Lord will forgive us. I say to you that on this day, the Lord has given us life. He's given us an opportunity to do something good. To love him and to love your neighbor. And now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide within us all henceforth, now and forevermore. And the church say, Amen. 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 Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, where I first believed. Oh, take me back. Take me back. Take me back, take me back to the Lord, to the place, to the place where, I, where I first received you. Take me back, take me back, take me back, Lord. Take me back to the Lord, where I first received you.